day on social media. Main risk because factors for preventable chronic diseases are tobacco use, things. lack of physical now, activity, and excessive alcohol use. The risk factors have caused unpreventable and preventable caution, diseases caution, like disability caution. and death. Please, and to reduce to these risk factors, prevent, prevent diseases or injury please, before it ever occurs, reduce the impact of a disease or injury that has already occurred, soften the impact of an ongoing illness or injury that has lasting effects. We all need to invest our time and money in improving healthy lifestyle behaviors by increasing physical activity and improving our diet. By doing this, almost 35% of early deaths will be avoided. Our integrative nutrition health specialist, Betty Olayinka Folari Akilo Soto, aka BOFA, advocates for this every Sunday on Health Corner and Nutrition Segments, showing on Healthy Living with BOFA Channel, where she also features professionals on interview with expert segments. Join us every Sunday, 2 p.m. U.S. time, 7 p.m. U.K. and Nigeria time, 8 p.m. South African time. See you there. Welcome back on the show, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. That is another Sunday, another edition on Healthy Living with Bofa Health and Nutrition Tank Show. Thank you all for procrastinating with us. Today, we bring back a common nutritionist, a genius. If you really want to confirm he is a genius, please call him after the show. Tell him your problem and get special treatment on Bofa. Whatever health issues you have going not in that body just give him a call tell him your story he will help you mr erich babatton the chatea is a nutritionist and was on the show recently and is returning today we bring him back on this show so he's back today for you and i so let's bring him in after the break can Cook Foundation, in collaboration with the Nigerian television authority NTA Lagos, present the second edition of Teens Can Cook competition. For registration and participation, obtain a form of 5,000 naira from NTA Yaba Lagos office or at number 56 Okwebi Road, Salvation Bus Stop, Ikeja, Lagos. The winner gets an all-expense paid trip to the United Kingdom. The first runner-up gets a laptop. The second runner-up gets a set of cookers. The third runner-up, a multifunctional dryer. And the fourth runner-up gets a set of non-stick pans. Hurry now for inquiries. Call the NTA Marketing Manager on 0816-0087357 or Dwyer on 0805-111-3510. Since Kaku Foundation in conjunction with the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, coming to live from January, register yourself. Don't miss out. Teams can cook, uncovering the prominent chef in you. All right, everyone, welcome on the show. Oh, my goodness. Mr. Herridge, welcome back on Healthy Living with Bofra Health and Nutrition Talk Show. How are you doing? I'm very well. Thank you so much. It's good, good to be back good, on good. the show. It's good to I'm have super, you back on the show. It's a pleasure I'm super having you back. excited. Yeah, I'm excited as well. Thank, thank you, you so, so, so much. <laughs> thank you so much. Welcome. Uh, let me use this time to say we really honor you for returning back to the show to give us the answers to the leftover question we have last time. And I really Thanks. acknowledge that honor. And I want to say thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're most welcome. You're most welcome. God bless you. Okay, yeah. let's go straight to why we are here. Let's get started. Exactly. Okay, now, last time we were unable to, you know, um, to answer some question relating to portion and distortion yes. control. And yes. this is basically what we're going to talk about. And again, food combining. Because food we combining. realize that these days, people are not taking um, precaution on that area. And that yes. is what is killing our people now. Because many people yes. think that um, for you to be healthy, it lies on what you eat alone. Meanwhile, we have a lot of things going on. Most people are not doing it right. They don't know what to put on their plate. They don't know when to eat it, the amount, the measurement. They ju they're just doing whatever they like. In fact, some 
sell it. When I see them posting food on this on, on their social media, I, I I bleed inside of me. Because what they don't realize is whatever they post on their social media, it tells a story, it teaches, yes. it educates yes. them because they believe that they know more than them, they are more knowledgeable than them. So whatever they do, they want to follow them, they want to imitate them, they want to believe that all they do is right, is legit. It's something they have experience right. on. Yeah. And meanwhile, this is not right. They are not completely yeah. right. So today we want to be talking and discussing and educating people on portion distortion and also, I mean, distortion control and food combined. And I'm sure you know what okay. portion and distortion are. They yeah, are yes, totally different yes, exactly. things. Yeah, they are different things. Different now, I want you to tell us what is portion control versus portion distortion. We want our people to know the difference first before we can now give them the, the the guidelines the rules how to go about this what to do please tell us in a few minutes so just quickly without wasting too much time i have mostly pictures to explain what i'm going to be talking about so uh, viewers too can have a vivid basic understanding of what we are talking about but portion control simply means just choosing a healthy amount of certain food that's portion control. A healthy amount of certain food means the quantity of what I'm eating. So I feel this amount is okay for me. I feel this amount, this quantity I'm eating is okay for me. Basically, that's portion control. And portion distortion basically means an effort in which someone is trying to eat whatever he or she has been served basically so take for instance whatever he or she has been served might even be more than enough for that person's consumption but the person has been served that so for some reason i don't want to waste food or something i just have to finish this food you get so that's portion distortion or basically having um what's it called how do i put it um the same quantity but the wrong combination in that place so having an image that will buttress that fact. So basically what I'm trying to say, you can see the image here now. We have what we call portion distortion here. So now this image is showing two different servings of food. You can see the first one and the second one. So now this can be seen as a portion for somebody to eat, but you can look at the quantity of what we have here already. Mm -hmm. Now, this first one is so much so depending on the individual personality, you can serve somebody this food and ordinarily the person doesn't like wastage, the food person wants to maximize his or her money, for whatever reason, I don't want to waste this food or I want to spend my money, I have to eat this food. Hmm. Irrespective of if you see that healthy for me or not healthy for me. That's one thing about it. But ordinarily, you can see the second image here. Now that is probably supposed to be what the actual portion size of what the person is supposed to have. So for some reasons, they are serving you this, you just want to finish it, you get. I have one of the questions that says, how do you manage or uh, work on portion distortion? I'm going to now explain better. Just another image to buttress this. There's another image. I'm trying to change the image. Yes. So this is another image of portion distortion. So take for instance, now it's not really about the quantity of food served, but guess what? We have 457 calories here, the same 457 calories here. So what's happening here? We have a bigger size of the main meal, but instead of making sure that there is a lot of healthy combination. So I'm hoping that our viewers can see the different yes. types. So it's a portion distortion. Mm -hmm. So it could be the quantity of the food, which you're not supposed to eat, or the combination of what you are actually eating. So now you have the same calorie intake, but how healthy is that calorie intake? So it's better to have four, five, seven calories of healthy combinations. So you have enough fruits and vegetables serves in a particular side of the place. You have your other protein 
and you have your main carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. Instead so, of having the left one, which is just the carbohydrate. The carbohydrate. Yes. So now you are normally we will say adequate balanced diet. It's you know a good quantity of carbohydrates, proteins, vitamins, and this, and that helps you a lot which is part of the benefits of portion control to prevent you from falling sick because you are not going to have micronutrient deficiency mm -hmm. at any age of any kind because in your portion control, you are having healthy amounts and healthy combinations. That's right. In portion control. So in portion control, helps you to have adequate balanced diet which prevents you from either being overweight or being deficient of any nutrients, basically. So when we say portion distortion, it's either you are trying to um, deserve you or for some reason you have so much, mm -hmm. so much quantity per time, and for some reasons you want to finish it. Or basically you're having this much, but it's the, the combination is not there. That's, That's right. the difference between portion control and portion distortion. And the health benefit of portion control is because you are conscious of the control, the amount, the quantity, it helps you with the adequate balanced diet. It helps you to eat healthy from time to time. It helps you to prevent falling sick. It helps you to uh, not be deficient of any form of micronutrients whatsoever because you have good combinations of what you are supposed to eat, basically. So those are the major advantages of portion controlling. And then also how to prevent portion distortion. Always try to make sure that uh, you're not carrying... I have one image here. Before you go there, of course, back to what you just said about, you know, portion control and versus, you know, distortion. Um, I want to say to people that, of course, when we talk about portion control, it's all about measurement of serving size as per yes, calorie count. Exactly. It's about fat content for different foods and beverages, whatever you put in your on your plate. Yes, portion control helps us get the benefit of nutrients in the food without overeating, just like our guest mentioned. Yes. And for portion discussion. The best way to understand portion distortion is when we view oversized portion of food as normal. Yes. When you see food that, okay, this food, oh my goodness, is contain a lot of things that you like. You want to exactly. see it as a normal plate. Meanwhile, it's a poison for you. Poison, exactly. So that's what I'm, we are basically selling you here. When you are given or you see food or you eat food that is meant for two or three two people. people. Exactly. And you don't see anything wrong with that. This is portion distortion. Distortion. Exactly. That's the only way you can understand it. Exactly the way our guests explain that. Exactly. And as you can see, it's showing right now on the screen the, the picture of the best one and the one that will give you, you know, uh, um, Poison, poison in exactly. your body. Thank you so much, Mr. You're, you're welcome. This is a back. really big deal to me. What I'm about to say <laughs> now, because I see a lot of early, like I said earlier, in this circle. Yes, some of them are guilty of portion distortion. I don't want to exactly. mention names on this show. No need, no need. A lot of and people. What, a lot of people. What infuriates me most of the time I see this going on is when I see elites, these so-called educated rich people posting oversized and healthy food on social media. It gives exactly. me bad vibes. Because what many people don't know, I mean, many of them don't understand is whatever we post on our pages speaks exactly. to people either negatively or positively. or positively. It passes information to people of what we post. It is not, it depends on who sees our post and how they exactly. relate to the post. I exactly. mean, individual understanding to the post matters a lot. For instance, to some people, there's so much trust and belief in for instance, you as a nutritionist, myself, on anything I post, believing is good when it's not sometimes. It's not, yes. 
And you know why they believe so much in us? Because they believe we are more knowledgeable, we are more educated, more advanced and mature than them. We have more understanding in what we are telling them. Telling them. Even when we are putting wrong information out there, this is the reason why we must make sure that whatever we put on that social media tells the truth. Exactly. Say the right thing, people will copy, people will believe. So this is the reason why everybody must be very careful of play on social media. Play on social media because it tells about us and other things. Now, how do we combat? How do we stop portion distortion? Portion distortion. Please, I want you to tell us how to prevent all exactly. these seeds that are going on on social media. Exactly. Go ahead. So, so, so one of the ways we can help to combat portion distortion, like you see from what I have here to, this is a picture of an unhealthy food combination and image. But usually more than 50%, 60% of people eat out packaged food and all that. Mm -hmm. So, but the idea is this now, like we said, eating oversized food, eating food now is meant for one or two people and thinking that is normal for me. For some reason, I don't want to waste my money because if I don't eat it, it will waste. So take, for instance, this is a picture of a serving, for instance, what it is in 1960, what it is in 2001. For some reason, you want to get the best for your money or they want to sell, they give you bigger portion. Now you have bigger portion, you, you prefer to go for the bigger portion. So you want, to, you want more for your money, that's the psychology. So mm -hmm. because you want more for your money, you are eating more. So where you now lose it is that even if you have this big portion, mm -hmm. even if it's jello fries or whatever kind of food, and you get more for your money, the best thing is you should now portion it. Tell yourself that this, I've gotten much for my money, but I cannot finish this at the same time. I don't want it to waste at the same time, but I'm health conscious. So what I can do is I can now portion control this quantity. I can serve in two plates. I can use a measuring plate or a measuring cup to measure the actual quantity I'm supposed to take at this time, instead of consuming everything at once. Hmm. Because you consume everything at once, there are complications to it. Most times you overweight, most times you add extra calories mm -hmm. and the likes. Okay. You should know this is the right portion control for me. So I'm going to decide to portion control this rather than, you know, um, using it up or finishing it at once. So another thing about the serving, like this picture I have here just talked about seven sides of vegetables. Mm -hmm. So normally we would say at least minimum of five servings of vegetables. So this is like a five seven. So now people always confuse servings with portion. portion but yes. we say servings does not mean that's a portion. Now, this old five seven can be a portion, but this is a serving. So what we're trying to say is that if we say at least have five servings of fruits and vegetables a day, that means you know that, okay, this is the quantity of this I'm eating at this time. So the quantity per is the serving. So take, for instance, you go to where they sell food, and they tell you a serving is 200. Now, that means maybe one serving is one spoon. Then they can decide to say three spoon is one portion. That's true. For that plate. Mm -hmm. So that means they'll give you one serving of the spoon, one, another serving, two, another serving, three, to make a portion. So now you need to be conscious of how much serving is going into your portion. Because if you do a mistake, you will have. That's when distortion will now come in. You now have so much servings that will feed like three or four person as one portion. Mm -hmm. So we need to be mindful of what you call your serving. So you don't mislead yourself when you are trying to do your portion control. So that means you need to have an idea of, am I using a cup or half a cup for my serving? So if I'm doing my portion, that means one cup is my portion, basically. Those are the few things we need to take note of. So I have an example of how to help to manage portion distortion. So that means you need to check with your serving. What are you using to serve? So I'm having a portion, I'm having, a, this is my portion for my meal. 
how much cup? Am I having a cup of um, celery? Am I having half cup? You can see the different measurements, different sizes of cup. We have um, uh, one cup, we have half cup, we have one quarter cup, we have three quarter cup. So once you are able to identify what the measurement is, you are able to know the right cup to get your portions for your portion control. And even if we say, okay, you're having lunch and your lunch is jello fries, which is healthy, and you're supposed to have one cup per portion. So that means you're taking one of these big cup here for a portion. We're not saying that that jello fries should be before cooking because before you cook, your calorie intake, you cannot calculate because you are adding different combinations to the jello fries. So the calorie intake, you cannot calculate your calorie before cooking. You are calculating your calories after cooking, basically. So you should be able to identify that, okay, once I'm done cooking, this is the portion I'm using. So you need to identify the right measurement, the right spoons, read food labels to manage portion distortion, to know how many calories, and don't eat from the package. Once you eat from the package, you will over miss it. So always use your measuring spoon and measuring cup to manage portion distortion. So you know that this, this is my portion already. So instead of eating it from the pack or from the containers, use your measuring um, spoons and your measuring cup to get the actual portion you want to eat at that time and save the rest for the next meal time. That's how you are able to balance it. So this is an example of what it's supposed to look like. So this is an assumption of spaghetti cooked. Then you've added your different combinations and everything to it. So if you are to eat one cup per serving for a portion, so this yellow, for instance, is a big cup. That's the one cup. The purple color is half cup, while the red cup is one third. So if you are to serve yourself one cup, that means after cooking, after everything is set, then you dish into this one cup to get your portion for that meal and serve. So anything beyond this yellow cup is more. Then maybe you are watching your weight, so you are not even able to eat one cup. They will now tell you for that serving, you're having half cup of the spaghetti or jello fries, and then you are now having one cup of vegetable because vegetable is always more to make a portion. Mm -hmm. So that means your rice should be half cup for that lunch. Maybe you're having lunch and it's rice and vegetable. Then we can decide to say your rice is half cup, which is the purple, and your vegetable is two cup because we want you to have more vegetable than the actual carbohydrate. Right. Then your protein can now be the one quarter cup, depending vis a vis. Okay, this is food combining. Before we get to food combining, I'm still talking about portion control. So, so the idea is that we need to have in mind that as a man, at least you need 2000 calories. So the problem is that we fail to identify how much calories I need. So we eat beyond the regular calorie and the body tends to stop. So for a man, you need at least 2000 calories for a woman, 2005 calories for a woman, you need at least 2000 calories you know, for your recommended daily allowance. Once you are able to know this is the calorie intake, there is no way you are going to have calorie deficits because you will now be able to plan your portion control. And how do you do that? How do you manage? So, like, I think I showed you the last time. When you have so much calorie intake, you gain more weight because you are not using, you are not working out, you are not exercising, you are not expelling that calorie. And then when you are doing that, you are able to strike a balance. So the idea is what you consume inside you should be enough you know, to strike a balance so you are not underweight, you are not overweight. And then basically how to calculate it is for every one gram of carbohydrate, you have four calories. For every one gram of protein, you have four calories. So for every one gram of fat, you have nine calories. So that's why you need to bear in mind if you are cooking jello fries, for instance, and you have used oil. So you have the calorie of the oil embedded in that. So you cannot calculate your servings for a portion before cooking up until after cooking. So it's only when you are done cooking, they now know, okay, so how much calorie is one cup? So that's I right. have like 50, 60 calories. 
So definitely, how I need to balance it is, this is my food plate now. This is what your plate is supposed to look like ordinarily. You are supposed to have more of vegetables. You can see almost half of your plate is vegetables. That's why initially in the cup, I was saying that maybe you can have two or three cups, one, two or three cups of vegetable, while the actual carbohydrate mm -hmm. will probably be one cup. Right. So the carbohydrate could range from potatoes, whatever it is, and then your protein is actually on the other side. So what we're trying to say is that eat more vegetables than the actual food. All this will actually help you with your portion distortion. So how to calculate it? Knowing that your one gram of carbohydrates is um, four calories, likewise protein, four calories, but for fats and oil, nine calories. And in a day as a man, you're supposed to have 2,500 calories. So as you can see there, they're saying that, so for you to divide your 2,500 calories, break oh, Hold on, hold on, I'm, I'm so sorry to jump in. Now you're saying that men should have at least 2,500 calories. A day. A day. So that means they can break that 2,500 into three. Or exactly. if you are eating twice a day, you make sure you break that 2,000 calorie into two. two. Yes. Right. Okay, and it must contain all the healthy food, like exactly. all your nutrients. Everything. A day. All right. A day. Go ahead. So, exactly. So take for instance, now you are breaking it down. If you are the type that have three course meal, that means for breakfast, you know you are not eating more than 700 calories to make it even. Likewise, your lunch, um, 850 calories, and your dinner, 650 days, like rice or swallow like pounded yam. Just bear in mind that you should be able to measure the cup. What's the calorie content per cup? That's per one size of serving that I'm eating. So once you're able to do that cal calculation, you are able to balance your 850 calories in your meal. So even if you're having to snack, what are you snacking on? Your calculation is still within 2,500. Okay. So now, you're Mr. Able to Henry, consider the yes. question here with this... Um, this breakdown. Does that mean that my breakfast must be exactly 700 from 2,500 calories? Does that mean that my snacks must be 150 calories? Or you, I just, I can just pick any random number for each lunch. Maybe my breakfast, I have 600. My snacks, I make it. 200 and my lunch and I, I reduce it to 800 my snack again and make it 200 just like that or does it have to be exactly the way you break it down yeah so basically it doesn't really have to be exactly the way i've broken it down but two things we should bear in mind at the end of the day by the time you do the total calculation everything should fit into 2500 calories to start yes. with one it must not be beyond 2,500 calories. And then no matter how you choose to do your calculation, you should know that your lunch should be more heavy because for lunch, you are still actively moving. You're probably at work. So if you have more heavy lunch, you're able to burn it faster than having a heavy dinner. And then you are probably going to sleep almost immediately after the dinner. So your, your dinner should not be as heavy as your lunch. Mm. basically and you have an early dinner say worst case 7 p.m and try to stay like, like another hour or so so that you can have proper digestion with good before you go to sleep if not you go to sleep you wake up with you either you're either constipated or bloated depending on your own type of body depending on how your body makeup is you know so but you allow for proper digestion before you go to sleep so there are, those are the two things you actually try to bear in mind basically now for the dinner i'm so concerned about the dinner uh, meal because a lot of people go to bed with heavy food heavy and food. we've been receiving messages telling us that what type of food should i eat when i'm going to bed because i want to have a smooth and good digestion I wake up early, you know, many people wake up early to go to, to work. So they go to bed earlier than myself. I go to bed late and I wake up late. 
And now, what type of food will you recommend for people who go to bed earlier for proper good digestion so that when they wake up in the morning, they will have, you know, their uh, stomach empty before they put another one. So we must make sure that whatever we want to eat, and I want you to tell them, and whatever you want to eat before you go to bed must be food that must digest before you wake up so that you can prepare your stomach for the next meal. So what type of food would you recommend for people going to bed um, before they, they, I mean, before they go to bed and give them proper digestion? So on, on the average, depending of um, your health status, if you are either managing anything or you are healthy, a very healthy dinner should be more of um, light food, easily digest food, like more of vegetables. So ordinarily, I would recommend if you are having dinner, you should do more of salads, depending on how you are making your salads. You should have either more of salad or sometimes smoothie depending. And then if you are going to have salads or vegetables, now aside from salads, if you're going to have vegetables, then you make sure that the vegetables should be more, way more than the actual, any form of carbohydrate you're having. So you can have, you can have uh, more of legumes or whole grains. So when you talk about legumes, we're talking about beans. Um, like chick beans, yes. lentils, you know, those kind of food that will probably easily digest in your system. Not a dinner you are eating this big size of fufu or any eba. major heavy carbohydrate like <laughs> eba or pounded yam. Mm. That's too heavy. I would recommend more of heavy food for lunch. More like more swallow for lunch, mm -hmm. you know, like yam for lunch, not dinner. Do you get so more of whole grains like either brown rice, something light, you know, and even when you're having the rice, if you have if, if you have to have rice for dinner, make sure that your vegetables or your salads that you're having with the rice is way more than the rice itself. That's taking us into portion portion control because they are, the they are in each other they are together they are you can do portion other. without yeah, having yeah. your uh combination of food combination about yes, food com so yes. everything is interwoven mm -hmm. you know so you so you are bearing in mind so there is no way you know that you're having a good portion control that you will not have more of this and less of that which is going to take us into food combining almost immediately after now now before you, you go to that food combining, food combining i always tell people because that is very important as well but portion control i have a friend it's a man he doesn't want to hear when it comes to portion control say betty please let me eat what i like i don't want to be hearing portion control <laughs> and i'm saying really i wish i'm your wife so that i can deal with you in that since i know that that is your weakness now exactly. if i wake up in the morning and remember i don't go to bed uh, i mean early i go to bed late if i want to eat my first breakfast that's at least 11 o'clock and the first thing i do and i recommend to people is the first thing you do is to take water Exactly. To cleanse your system. When you take water, you prepare your. It's, it's like you are fasting. You want to break your fasting. You don't just take amala or eba. You must take either food or liquid to to prepare your your, your system. system. So the thing, but the things I do because many people you are watching me right now. You keep asking me questions that like, how are you doing it why you look like this and so on a lot of things i'm giving you the secret today and i guess mr Eric just mentioned exactly what i do every day aside my my exercise first thing i do in the morning is to take my water and 30 minutes after i go on smoothie sometimes i don't go to bed with food sometimes i go with just vegetables or smoothie as well, or just tea. So having my smoothie with ginger fluid, I mean, I use my ginger juice to prepare my smoothie because a lot of things you get from your ginger as well. It's a herbal tea for me. If I don't take my green tea, I'll go for my smoothie. And those smoothie must contain cucumber, 
mm. and garnish it with, um, uh, with um, pineapple or one of these fruits. Then I've had kale or spinach. I blend it together with my um, um, ginger juice. That is what I drink every morning after 30 minutes of water before I now take my lunch. My lunch could be rice and I don't just eat regular rice. I eat either brown rice meat cooked together with wild rice. The black rice, like they are very nutritious. nutritious. So this exactly. is what I eat and I make sure that a lot of vegetables are I can't eat rice without vegetables. I make sure that my rice comes with As vegetables. I don't eat African food much, but that rice, the beans, the amala, which is made with uh, plantain powder. These are the swallow that I made and other food. Those are the things that I eat for my lunch. In, in the evening, I mean, just take my tea, go to bed, or take vegetable, a furry roll, just go to bed. Fantastic. That's what I do. Now tell me, how do you want me to gain weight with this food? Exactly. How would you expect my skin to be fed because of the food I chose to take both morning and in the evening? Mr. Nice. Henry, I want to say thank you so much for giving us all this information. It's really, really helped. I'm telling you. Now, the question I want to ask you is this. Do portion control plates really work with your clients in Nigeria? Because if we look at the way people eat in Nigeria, anyway, no one comes to you without having any health issue. And the condition you put them, they will follow your rules exactly. because they want to exactly. get rid of their problem. Exactly. So now, do pressure control plates really work with your clients in Nigeria? If yes, please tell us the benefits and the importance of portion control. How you get your client to 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 accept this portion control because it's it's a very hard thing for people in Nigeria to follow the rules that you are putting on their table. Tell us how you you, you do it. Okay, so the thing is this: uh, from the beginning, you have to orientate people. We have a team, and I, I have a psychologist that work with me, and then we have a routine. So either you even have health issues or you don't have health issues because we have a couple of people that are so health conscious. Maybe they've seen, they've had, you know, different things happen to the people they know. So they are trying to prevent. We have a couple of clients or patients like that too. So we let we prepare their mindset. Everything is all about the mindset. Yeah, that's right. You know? So we prepare their mindset to let them understand and we orientate them. And from time, we reorientate them. We have a lot of them that in between, they are struggling with it. But once the mindset is ready, in time, they adjust and um, get used to what it's supposed to be. They realize that, oh, like I was, I had some consultations earlier today, and then I was consulting with somebody and the meal plan, everything was ready and it was like, Oh, so you mean I'm not going to have this again? I'm not going to have that again? I was like, it's okay, it's okay, just take it easy. I'm not it's like you are you taking their soul out of their body. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so he was already scared that ah, in the night I usually have this. I, I said, no, it's fine. But gradually, gradually, we're going to get there. And at the same time, I, I make them see what the end picture is like. We are trying to achieve this. This is what we are looking at. So Good. for us to achieve this, Fantastic. we have to, you want to look like this, you want to be like this, you want to feel better. This is what is going to cost us to actually get to this level. So are we ready to go on this journey? Because it's a journey. I tell them it's a lifestyle change. So this is a lifestyle change. So I do a lot of psychological things to prepare their mind. Mm. Wow. Because we need to be careful in terms of, before now, I work with them. I tell them, do this, do that. I'm not with many. I have a lot of them. I'm not with them. I'm not in their houses. I don't know what they are doing. They can as well come and lie to me. Uh, I, you said I should do this. I've done it. That's what I did. But guess what? Because I always, another most important thing I do, I monitor and evaluate them. So I have indices. I look at their results. Uh, some of them, if it's blood pressure or blood sugar, they give me a chart. So first thing in the morning, your random blood sugar, your fasting blood sugar, your blood pressure when you first wake up, when you are lying down, depending on what it is, I want to see because I have my calculations. 
So by the time I see, and I know that something is wrong somewhere, I tell them I have an expectation. We didn't meet up to the expectation what happened. I start confessing. I'm sorry, I did this, I did that. I said, hmm. so it's reflecting in your results. Wow. So it's reflecting. So for Thank that means you know. So because they know that even if they don't tell me, I will eventually know. Some of them will now call me. I'm about to indulge. I just want to have this one. It's just one. Can I have it? And I'll be like, okay, because they could as well have it and lie to me. So I have a 2080 rule, 8020 rule for them, at least over time. Then in time, they will now get to the realization of I have somebody that was diabetic and would take all this fizzy drink, the most popular one. I wouldn't mention the name. You know, the most popular one that anybody can take for lunch, dinner. Yeah, very the fizzy drink I'm talking about. I'm sure you know it. I won't just mention the name. You know. So, and the person is diabetic. So the person will tell me that I'm seeing it, it's calling me, I want to have it. I'm like, no, you can't have it because the more you have it, the more it increases your sugar level and you are managing your sugar level. So it's a, it's, it's a lot of discipline. It's a lot of training per time for them to be able to overcome whatever temptation or challenge and stay on the right track. And when they are seeing the result, it helps. So that's why we are more of result oriented. So we set a goal together for ourselves, you know, a short term goal, and we are both trying to achieve the goal. And the more they see themselves achieving the goal, the more they want to do it. I don't know if you get it. So that really works on their psychology. When they see that in two months, I have somebody, the sugar level was really dropping fast. He was very happy. The PSA was coming down very fast. It wasn't easy, but because of the result, he said, ah, I'm even going to now do it better like this. I'm going to do it. I said, fantastic. So I don't need to force you to do it. Now you have chosen to do it by yourself. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Now let's go to food yeah. combination. I want you to tell us yes. what food combination yeah. is and the purpose of it. Go ahead and tell us. Okay. Okay, so I think I have an image here that is displayed on the screen that can possibly help me to explain what food combining is basically. But if you look at the image very well, food combining basically is talking about eating certain foods separately from others. Now, some people believe that food have unique uh, effects on the pH level in our body in, and in our digestive tract. And as a result of that, these foods should not probably be combined together, basically. So now they try to probably separate them depending. So, so if you look at the, the chart, it's very easy. There are some food that you are, are meant to probably eat alone. And there are some food that can go with other food. So we have, like, say, watermelons. You have your juices and you have water. So right. they are almost best taken alone, like your melons, take your melon alone. Mm -hmm. It's not like as if in a way when you combine maybe your melon with another recipe, there is a major issue. But based on the scientific fact that their effect on the digestive system, their effect on the pH level, mm -hmm. that is why we are possibly looking at, okay, that means you get the best out of this food when you take it alone, basically. Right. So the idea is that we are look, classifying them based on their acidic state, their alkaline state, or their natural state, basically. That's the idea between food combining. So you can see your greens in the middle. Mm -hmm. Take, for instance. Now, what we are trying to say now is that your greens can go well with any acidic food, like any like of those surrounding the greens. Can so go together. Exactly. Exactly, they can balance, you know. So either your greens with your acidic food, like your citrus or something, or your greens can go well with your proteins, your beans, your lentils, or something, you know, with your fats, your healthy fats, your greens can go with your um, leafy green vegetables, your avocado. So depending on, you just know the right combination, how best to eat, what to eat with this, and what to eat with that. And that's why when we are making a meal plan or when we are putting recipes together that are very effective, is because we have an idea of the right combination 
And that's why the recipes are more effective than when you just put this together. So I was consulting with somebody, and the person said, ah, I drink juice a lot, I take juice. And the person said, I will add this to this, to that, to that. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> You know, I actually heard people say something like that. And now, you know what? I always try to put myself in that shoe. I make myself vulnerable sometimes. I test, I go ahead and practicalize what they do. You know, and because I really want to tell, I want to feel what they will feel so that we'll be able to tell them the repercussion, the consequence after doing so. I would do the same thing, putting this, adding this, and, and despite that, I knew that this is not working. It's not good. Yeah. And when I start taking that food, I will start having bloating, exactly. constipation. You will have exactly. your stomach getting bigger for no reason. So these exactly. are the examples. I would let them understand that, okay, when I was doing this, this is what I feel. And I know the same thing you will feel. So it's better you don't do it. And in Nigeria, it may be because they don't have knowledge enough to understand that there are certain food you don't put together. You don't combine when you are eating. And by the time they start facing the consequences, like you have the uh, uh, high blood pressure setting, yep. you know, you have your yes. uh, the bloating. They don't, some people don't even know uh, bloating versus constipation they mix it together constipation. indigestion yes. all this they don't know that this food cause all these problems yes heart what sometimes. you put in your system cause yes, a lot a lot of problems we are suffering from today and that's the reason why i tell people that not all the food you i mean not all the health problems you have today need surgery or procedure or even medication some you need to work on your food, what you eat. Exactly. And exactly. No, 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 exactly. no, 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 sensation this thing in my heart i don't know so it was when i was able to have felt some sort of relief so no more the burning sensation she would usually feel on the chest area on the heart area relieve that three days four days one week she never had the burning sensation mm -hmm. anymore so I just told her it is how you you mumbled everything together. That's the reason why. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Now let's yeah. talk about um, your recommendation for underlying people with underlying illnesses. Yeah. What yeah. diet would you recommend for people with underlying illness? The best one. I'm not talking about healthy people. Yeah, that's a very interesting question very tricky, very broad, but I'll make it simple and quite explanatory. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to recommending a diet plan or something for a patient going through an underlying disease, to start with, there are different types of meal plans and diet plan for different health issues. So there are, if somebody just comes and say, I'm diabetic, so you're looking at reverse diabetes. If somebody comes and say, I have high blood pressure, we're looking at DASH diet. So we call DASH diet, dietary approach to stop hypertension. Do you get? So we have a lot, okay, someone, I'm, I have, I'm overweight, I want to manage my weight, or I have kidney problem, you know, the CKD. So there are different health issues. So there are different diets. And when we are now trying to manage them, we have to do like a proper consultation to take the history of the person, to have an idea of what works, food allergies, what would have caused the issue. So it's a lot of investigation for us when we are actually putting a plan together for an individual that has an issue. And in most cases, most of them don't just have high blood pressure. Some would say, I have high blood pressure, there's diabetes, there's this and there's that. So there are a lot of things we're even trying to look into and reverse at the same time. 
So take, for instance, the most recent diet I was trying to plan for someone is someone that have hormonal imbalance. It's a man, a patient, a male patient with hormonal imbalance and thyroid issues. Now, thyroid issue, to, to do a thyroid plan is a bit difficult or complicated or time-taking in the sense that ordinary, because the person has increased hyperthyroidism, the person might not be able to take some kind of vegetables that are goitrogenic from the cruciferous vegetables, like maybe broccoli or cauliflower. Put an idea to what menu plan or what protocol an individual going through any underlying health issues we go through. But basically, we follow some principle. I particularly follow some principle, irrespective of the combination, or either it's an elderly person or a young person or whatever it is. So it's usually plant-based, um, high-fiber content food because we have the recommended amount of fiber we are supposed to take per day, which has a lot of health effects on our body. Low glycemic food because of the effect of the kind of food we're taking again, uh, the amount of sugar we have in them, and low fat, or what kind of fat we are taking. Once you are able to put all those together, you are able to have an idea of the right combination, the right food, and the right portioning, and you're on a good path to your health, basically. This show, it's all about preventive care. That's what we care about on this show. We don't want it to happen at all. So if you see any signs now, it is better to tackle it now than waiting till when you won't be able to solve it. You won't be able to solve that problem. So I'm going to ask our guest, Mr. Enrich, please and please let us know where we can contact you, your contact number, your address, wherever you think our people can reach you at. Please give us that information now before we bring the, today's interview. So for those that would want to reach us, um, I think my phone, no, our phone numbers, um, it's 070-325-84163, 070-325-84163. And our social media handle is at The Nutritionist Company, on Instagram, on Facebook, um, Instagram, Facebook, and the website is www.thenutritionistcompany.com. So Instagram, Facebook, website, WhatsApp, you can always reach us. Thank you so much, Mr. Erich, for coming. Before you go, I want you people to look at something that I'm going to show you. Because many people just get out in the morning. They don't bother to check their vital signs, especially those of you that have one issue or the other going on. You have high blood pressure, you have diabetes, you have this, you have that. You need to check, especially when you're diabetic, you need to check your sugar. And those of you that, that are suffering from high blood pressure, you need to check your blood pressure before you step out, even before you eat. You need to do all this before. And out there, you have a lot of devices. I, I blood pressure device. You have a, um, a blood sugar device that you can go to the store and get. Example of that, I'm going to show you like this one right now. This is Bluetooth. I be, in fact, it has many functions. This will read your BP, will read your temperature, was to read your EKG, your breathing. You read everything and, and your pulse. And it's Bluetooth. You, you can connect it to your phone. It brings everything down for you. It takes about one second to do all this. It, let me show you. So this is what I use, and I want everybody to make sure that they have that in their own. It, it's first aid. I call it first aid. Here, if you have problem before the um, 911 come, you have to do it yourself. It's very easy to use. I'm, I'm not advertising. I'm just telling you what you need. <laughs> I don't have company that I'm I'm just telling you. Right here to see how easy it is. If I'm anywhere.
where I'm going in the world. Yes. This is what I go with. Right? If I, if I, I can do that, but if you want it, I can get it for you. It's not, it's not that costly much. It's not costly. So it is not even how much is it? Maybe $70 or $75. Here, you put it right here. In fact, it looks like when you are running uh, in the morning for your exercise. Remember that there's something that you put on your on your hands like this that will be reading you. It's the same thing. This one, it works like magic. Trust me. It's going to read everything. Push again. Right here is reading. Let's see. You see? And you yeah, can hear the sound. Reading. Yes, yes. I'm counting. I'm counting the, the, the seconds. Not even one second. Everything is done. So before you leave your house, try as much as possible. If you have device that you can test, it's very important. Check it. Check your vital sign. Everything is here. Your high blood pressure, your um, your temperature, your EKG, right? Your, your pulse. You see? You see right here, you get the answer, the results immediately. And it transfers to your phone because it's going to be connected to your phone. You download the app. Then once you plug it together, you have it, um, where's the cable? Right here. You can charge it, come as USB. And it also has battery. So anything you want to do, you have to do it with common sense. This one, you go to the hospital. Just checking your, they just want to check your vital sign like this at the hospital or clinic. You will pay thousands of naira. Now you have it in your house. You do it in the morning before you go out. Those that have a, um, they'll tell you this one, they see it yesterday before they get there. He's dead. No. Maybe hypertension, high blood pressure. Lots of things are going on in Nigeria now that can even kill more than food, empty stomach. They kill. This um, heart problem, heart disease, they kill more than anything. So please and please do the necessary things that you think you need to do before it is too late. It is important. And I will say thank you so much to Mr. Harris for coming on the show today to bless us again. My goodness, you are thank a you. genius. I say it before you join us thank and I'm you. saying it now and we do appreciate your time on the show today again as usual yes thank we do thank, thank you, you so, so much. much god will continue thank to you bless so you much. to lift you up Amen. for Amen. helping people Amen. out there because what you are doing is a very Amen. wonderful things and we want to give you kudo and credit for that thank you so much thank you for coming thank you so much thank you Have so much night. thank you so much god bless you too Amen. you too Amen. man Amen. Bye. Yeah. all right people Time to go to bring you another edition on this show next week. Let me leave you with this. We can do anything we want to if we stick to it. Please, change your bad or let me call it unhealthy eating habits today before it is too late. That food looks deliciously attractive. Yes, of course, it is true. It looks so delicious to you. But let me tell you, that food that looks deliciously attractive to you can be a poison. So be healthy, conscious. Be healthy and nutritious, conscious. It is very important. 
Thank you so much for joining us today. That's all we can share with you today on portion and discussion control as well as food combination from Healthy Living with Bofa Health and Nutrition Talk Show by Henry Babatunde Shotaye on interview with expert segment. I'm Betsy Olayin Kafolani Akinosotu, aka Bofa, holistic nutrition health specialist and advocate for health and wellness. Remember to share this video with your network. Connect us. Contact us. Reach out to us via our IG, which is Instagram and Facebook at Healthy Living with Bofa TV. See you next week.